Hello and welcome to Team Hypercube's Quick Play, the series where we run you quickly through the rules so you spend less time reading the rulebook and more time playing the game. Today we are playing Dungeon Fighter. I know what you're thinking, another dungeon crawling game, and yes it is, but it's unique in the fact that the dice don't matter as much as how you roll the dice. I'll explain in a second, but first, setup. The board is a target and it's a four piece puzzle. If you can't figure it out, there's no helping you. If you wanna crawl through a dungeon, you have to have a dungeon to begin with. So take the double-sided dungeon cards, shuffle them up and lay them out according to the arrows. The arrows should always point toward the next floor, not away from it. Make sure the last card and only the last card has the special gray border around it. That tells you that it's the final floor of the dungeon and it's often much more dangerous than the preceding floors. If you want to have a dungeon, then you have to populate it. This is the dungeon card holder uh, tower, which is, I mean, it's just a card holder, but it's kind of cool as well. You're gonna draw a total of 14 monster cards from four different difficulties of monster. Depending on how hard you want your adventure to be, you can change the relative composition of the difficulty of the monsters in those 14 cards. For example, easy mode from the rulebook has you playing a total of four level ones, four level twos, four level threes, and two level fours. Now that is after you pick your final boss monster, which you should do randomly and put it at the end of your dungeon, populating your dungeon with a total of 15 encounters. Once you have your monster deck figured out, shuffle up your Emporium cards and just put those somewhere in your card holder. That'll be the equipment that you and your party buy during the campaign to help you on your way. Start your party off with two gold and one white bonus die, and also place the three colored hero dice in the party inventory. Finally, pick your character. Each player gets a character. They have nine hit point track, uh, they also have an inventory. Each player can carry three items. Which items they can carry are designated by the symbols in their inventory bar. Sir Mu, for example, can carry one weapon, one shield, and one item. Each character is also going to have three special abilities. Those special abilities trigger under certain circumstances during combat and can help you a lot. So make sure you understand what your character's abilities are and the abilities of your other party members so you guys can synergize and strategize together. Each player starts with nine hit points, but as you lose hit points and you get down below one, you faint. After the combat in which you faint, you'll rise up again, but you take with you a scar token. That scar token is going to cover up one of your special abilities and three of your hit points. So you're much weaker and less powerful after you faint. Once you have three scar tokens, you're dead forever. Now you're ready to start adventuring. Place your party's marker right outside the entrance to the dungeon and start playing. Each round consists of several phases. The first being movement. You move your party to a new room along the arrows that are pointing out of your current position. Your group should study its route carefully because there are all kinds of strategic considerations that you may want to take into account. For example, there are special rooms that can make things more difficult or award you bonus treasure or even heal your party to full. After the movement phase comes the end encounter phase. There's an encounter in every room in the dungeon. Draw the topmost card from your dungeon tower to reveal your encounter. Each card will have the same basic features, the amount of damage you have to do to destroy it, the amount of damage it does to you, and the reward for killing it, usually in gold. The final bottom field will tell you whether there are any special restrictions on rolling the dice during the fight with this monster. This is where Dungeon Fighter gets really fun. The game gets more difficult by both buffing up the monsters with their health and damage, and by making requirements of the players when they throw their dice. Like they have to throw it under their leg, or over their shoulder, or off of their nose. This is where it gets really fun and crazy, because you might find a weapon that lets you do three extra damage, which is phenomenal, but you have to throw the dice while spinning in the air or something like that. And those requirements all stack with each other. So if you have to throw a die off of your nose and do it while spinning in the air and flip it over under your leg, you have to do all three of those things in order to actually hit the monster. The first player begins the fight by choosing one of the three colored dice in the party's inventory. This is where the colors of the dice are very important. Each character has three different powers, and those powers each correspond to a color. If I roll the blue die, I'm trying to activate this power specifically, and none of my other party members are going to be able to activate their blue power until the blue die is reclaimed. A character's special ability activates when they roll a die matching that ability's color, and it ends up with the eye 
pointing up. Some of the special abilities require you to actually hit the monster to activate. Some of them will activate even on a miss. So the decision of which die to use is very important. After selecting a die, the player throws the die at the board, trying to land it in as high scoring an area as he can. Wherever the die lands will be the damage that player deals to the monster. The main rule in Dungeon Fighter is that the die must always bounce once before it hits the board, which means you have to have a fairly large table to make it work. If the die bounces before it hits the board and lands in one of the scoring sections of the target board, that player has hit the monster. Subtract the appropriate number of hit points from the monster's total hit points and pass the turn. However, the die that you've used stays on the board. That die is not available to the other players. If the player misses the monster, the player suffers damage equal to the monster's damage value, so the monster hits you back. The next player has only the option of the two remaining colored dice the third player will only have the one, and the player after that needs to make a choice. They either use one of their one-time only bonus dice from the party treasury, or they restart the round. At the end of the round, the monster deals its damage to the entire party, and they reclaim their three hero dice. Once the heroes have defeated the monster by reducing its hit points to zero, that monster is defeated, collect its gold reward, and put that in the party treasury. Now you enter the maintenance phase. If you manage to defeat the monster without rolling all three hero dice, you get a bonus die for each hero die that remains. This is also the phase where you revive and scar any of the fainted heroes. Note that if all the heroes faint at the same time, the game is over. At the end of each floor, you'll run into a shop. The shop has Emporium cards. Deal out six Emporium cards. The party doesn't have to buy everything here, but if you see something you like, spend the gold from the party chest and put that item next to your character sheet. You can also buy bonus dice at the cost of two gold per die, or you can buy healing at the cost of one gold per hit point. Remember that those bonus dice are very, very important, especially during the final boss fight. Depending on the route you take, you may not fight all 14 monsters before you get to the final boss. The win condition is your party defeats the boss. And that's everything you need to know to get started. If you enjoy Team Hypercube's quick play tutorials, show us some love in the comments, give this video a thumbs up, share it out, and if you wanna watch our playthrough of Dungeon Fighter, that let's play is going to be linked right below. As always, thanks for watching and have fun out there. Team Hypercube out.